Hello and welcome to Empowered Learn. This particular video will be about a trigonometric series on such items as the sum and difference formulas, double angle formulas, half angle formulas, as well as the sum to product and product to sum formulas. We'll also we'll get into solving some uh, well solving some basic trigonometric equations and um, evaluating some inverse trig expressions as well. So we want to go ahead and get started on this first example here. And so we see we have cosine of 3 pi over 10 times cosine of pi over 5 minus sine of 3 pi over 10 times sine of pi over 5. So the first thing that we notice is that this angle and this angle are the same, and this angle and that angle are the same. And so if we look here, that follows the basic profile of one of our um, sum the difference formulas. In particular, it follows the profile of cosine of a plus b. So cosine of a plus b is equal to cosine of a cosine of b minus sine a sine b. So uh, what we want to do is since we know that we're going to have to add these together, um, let's go ahead and figure out what 3 pi over 10 plus pi over 5 is going to end up being. So since this is a fraction, we know that we have to have common denominator. So let's uh, multiply uh, top and bottom or numerator and denominator of pi divided by 5 by 2. And so we get 3 pi over 10 plus 2 pi over 10 in that case, which gives us 5 pi over 10. And if we reduce that, we will get pi divided by 2. So, therefore, we know that cosine of 3 pi over 10 plus pi over 5 is equal to cosine of pi over 2. And, of course, cosine of pi over 2 is just 0. And we know that because if we look at the graph of cosine, uh, for its fundamental period, kind of looks like this. And this is at 2 pi. And right here, oops. So right here. Right, let's see. See if we can get that working now. Let's see. Get that working. Didn't seem to want to work for me there, but anyway, my point is that when it first hits the x-axis here, I don't know why it's doing that, but as soon as it hits the x-axis here, that first point is going to be at pi over 2, okay? We have this point here, the corresponding um, x value there is going to be pi goes here and right here at that particular x value that would be 3 pi over 2. So in short we know that um, at pi over 2 that the first time it crosses the x-axis there I don't know why it's doing all that trying to label that yes yeah. so there we will end up having um, cosine of pi over 2 equals 0 okay all right so we'll go ahead and move on to the next one hopefully we won't have any more um, technical difficulties here so here we have sine of pi over 2 minus beta and so we don't know what beta is but we do know that uh, this fits the profile of sine of a minus b and of course, sine of a minus b, if we look, is going to be sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. So we have sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. And we'll kind of section this off here so that we don't 
get that confused you have a problem so now if we do that then when we plug this in we have sine of pi over 2 cosine beta minus cosine of pi over 2 sine beta and of course cosine of pi over sorry cosine of pi over 2 here is 0 sine of pi over 2 is 1 so we just have cosine beta minus 0 which just ends up being cosine of beta so we have those two problems down there all right so let's go ahead and move on and we'll see that now what we're asked to do is determine the exact value of the following trigonometric function here so now um, we're given something in degrees and the hint here is that we know that 105 degrees is uh, 60 degrees plus 45 degrees okay so here we know that cosine of a plus b and we're going to call 60 degrees a and 45 degrees b if we have that then we know that cosine of a over b is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b okay and so uh, if we fill that in we know that cosine a is 60 so we just do 60 degrees here and this will be 45 degrees there sine of 60 degrees here sine of 45 degrees there so uh, go ahead and try to make that look a little better so 45 degrees there and so um, now to help us remember what these um, trigonometric uh, functions are at these angles we could draw us two right triangles here okay so we got a 30 60 90 triangle where we have one square root of three and two and then we have one here for a uh, 45 45 90 triangle so 45 45 and that's 1 1 square root 2 and so from there we can pretty much evaluate what we need to so cosine of 60 degrees if we're looking at the 60 degree angle um, here for the first triangle we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so the adjacent side to the 60 degree angle is 1 hypotenuse is going to be 2 times cosine of 45 degrees uh, we look at one of the 45 degree angles and of course again that's adjacent over hypotenuse so that is 1 over square root of 2 minus now we do sine of 60 degrees um, sine is opposite over hypotenuse so now that gives us square root of 3 over 2 times sine of 45 degrees which will still be 1 over square root of 2 and so from that point we can just simplify and We'll just have 1 minus square root of 3 over 2 times square root of 2. And we can either leave the answer like that, or we could rationalize the denominator by multiplying numerator and denominator by square root of 2. If we do that, we'll have a square root of 2 minus square root of 6, because again, we're distributing the both terms there. And of course, in the denominator we just have 2 times square root of 2 times itself is just 2 so we have square root of 2 minus square root of 6 all over 4 okay and so we could do that as our final answer all right moving on so if we go to our next example here we have tangent of pi over 12 and we realize that pi over 12 is the same as pi over 3 minus uh, pi over 4 so um, just to let you know pi over 12 is the same as uh, 15 degrees because here we know that pi over 3 is 60 degrees pi over 4 is 45 degrees okay so 60 minus 45 is 15 so you can also think of it that way if you want now we know that for um, 
since we are taking pi over 12 and making it into uh, the difference of two angles, we're going to use the formula for um, the difference in between two angles involving tangent. So that'll be tan of A minus B is equal to tan of A minus tan of B all over 1 plus tan of A times tan of B. Okay. And so now if we come in and actually fill in the angles, let's say that pi over 3 is A, pi over 4 is B, then we have tangent of pi over 3 minus tangent of pi over 4 all over 1 plus tangent of pi over 3 times tangent of pi over 4. Okay, And so again, just kind of like how we did last time, um, we could make our little right triangles here. And so that would be 30, 60, 1 square root of 3, 2. And we can make the other one here. 45, 45, 1, 1 square root of 2. Okay. So um, coming back over here, let's kind of make this a little line here. We know that tangent of pi over 3 or tangent of 60 degrees is going to be opposite over adjacent, which would be square root of 3 over 1, which is just square root of 3. Oops, let's get rid of it and try that again. Alright, so we'll have uh, square root of 3 over 1, which is just square root of 3. Um, tan of pi over 4, in other words, uh, that would be um, opposite over adjacent again. So 1 divided by 1 would be just 1. And of course, 1 plus tangent of pi over 3. We know that that's square root of 3 again. And tangent of pi over 4 would just be 1. So we would just have square root of 3 minus 1 divided by 1 plus square root of 3. And that would be our final and exact answer. All right, so continuing on in our discussion about um, using the sum and difference as well as double angle, half angle um, identity formulas, we have uh, this problem here that asks us to look at uh, cotangent of x equals 2 and then evaluate um, these particular expressions based upon what we know about um, the given angle x. And so we just know that cotangent of x is equal to 2 and that x is in between pi and 3 pi over 2. All right, so to start off noting this, we know that uh, pi is the same as 180 degrees and we know that uh, 3 pi over 2 is the same as 2 7. Um, if you notice here, when we are asked to evaluate some of these angles here, we're also looking at, uh, what is it, uh, two times the angle and half of the angle. So if we know that x is in between 180 and 270 degrees, then we know that half of that, so x over pi over 2, we know that this is going to be in between 90 degrees and 135 degrees, okay? And we know two times that, let's see, two times that is going to be 360 degrees to 540 degrees. And of course, uh, 540 degrees, hold on, let me get this looking a little bit better. 
So we do 540 degrees. If we take 540 and subtract that from 360, we get 180. Okay. And if we, uh, of course, subtract 360 from 360, we get zero. So an equivalent way to, to look at this is 2x is going to be somewhere in between here. Okay. And we want to know that because whenever we're evaluating these expressions uh, below, we need to know where the angle is actually going to fall. Okay. All right. So we first off, we know that cotangent of x is going to be equal to 2. And so we know that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So let me see that. Let's get the pen working right here. So we see that. We know that uh, what that means here is that if we do the reciprocal of cotangent, that's tangent. And if we do the reciprocal of 2, that's 1 over 2. Okay. So we have that much going on right now. Now from here, um, notice that we know that tangent is also going to be opposite over adjacent. So if we look at this in terms of a right triangle, opposite over adjacent. So that means that we need to find out what this side C is going to be. And so uh, we could easily find that. I'll just come up here to do that. That would be both um, the square of both sides equal the square of the hypotenuse. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And of course, uh, we have 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1 squared, which is 5. I mean, 1. 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1 squared, which is 1. And if we add that, that'll be 5. And so thus, from that, we know that if we take the principal root of both sides, we'll have c equaling square root of 5. So that is what this side of the triangle looked like. Now, we know that since x is going to be in uh, between 180 and 270 degrees, then when we're dealing with x, we know that both sine and cosine are going to be negative, okay? So I'm just going to kind of label it like this. Whenever we have one half of x or x divided by 2, we know that uh, 90 to 135 degrees is in quadrant 2. So if we're dealing with this, then we know in quadrant 2, cosine is negative, but sine is positive. Okay? And then if we are doing 2x, or 2 times the angle, we know that's going to be in between um, 0 to 180. And of course, um, for there, it just kind of depends upon um, where it actually is. Okay? So we can't really um, look at that too much. So we'll just see if we can um, improvise without that moving forward here. And if we have to look into it further, we will. Okay. All right. So we have all this information here. And so from that, we can use sine of 2x now. We know that that's going to be 2 times sine x cosine x. Okay. And so... Um, in looking at this, we know that sine of x, since it's going to be in quadrant, um, what is it, in quadrant 3, so that's what this tells us here when we have it from in between um, one, 180 to 270 degrees, it's in quadrant 3, we know that sine is going to be negative, so this should be a negative and then sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine will be a negative adjacent over hypotenuse. And of course, if we multiply all that together, a negative times a negative is a positive. 
um, we know that uh, 2 times 1 times 2 will give us 4, and square root of 5 times itself will give us 5. So we see that our answer here would be a positive 4 fifths. Okay, now moving on to cosine of x divided by 2, we see that we have plus or minus square root of 1 plus cosine of x, all of that divided by 2. And so uh, from there, of course, we note that in for the angle x divided by 2, that's going to be in quadrant 2. So cosine will have to be negative in this sense. So we know that our resulting answer will be negative, square root. And now we just evaluate um, the identity. So we know cosine of x is just going to be a negative 2 times square root of 5. Okay. And then all of that is divided by 2. And so from this point, um, we have all the numbers that we need. We just need to make it look nice from this point. So uh, we'll do a little algebraic manipulation to get this looking the way that it should, and then we'll move on. Okay. So uh, first thing, if we go ahead, make sure that we keep this negative and we can multiply let's see what would be the easiest thing to do um, i'll just go ahead and um, multiply the first term in the numerator um, by square root of five over square root of five um, if we do that we end up having five minus square root of two over square root of five and then all of that divided by two and need to extend my little square root sign here so, so I'm having some technical difficulties here but we'll get it working All right, so I <laughs> thought we actually had that working there. All right, so we have that. And so now this will be a negative. And so now we'll multiply both numerator and denominator uh, by, by um, one half to get rid of the fraction here. So if we do that, this will be square root of, of course, if we do, let's say, one half here and one half there we'll just have one down here and this will be square root of five minus square root of two all that divided by two times square root of five which will now just be square root of five minus square root of two all over 2 square root of 5 and then we will um, rationalize the denominator here so we'll come down here we'll rationalize the denominator by multiplying the fix that right quick Get rid of it and try it again. All right. So we'll do that and multiply um, the numerator and denominator inside the radical by square root of five. So um, if we do that, and I'll just go ahead and Show that I'm actually doing that here. Save us a little space. All right, so we're doing that. Square root of five. 
put it in the five. So if we do that, then in the first term in the numerator, that will just be five. Second term in the numerator be two times square root of five. Sorry, uh, square root of two times square root of five, which would be square root of 10. So we're gonna get rid of that. And here in the denominator, we would just have two times five, which would be 10. And of course, uh, that will pretty much be it. So a um, little messy, but of course we got to the answer that we need. So the next one that we need to do is tangent of two X. So we'll go ahead and calculate that one right quick. So tangent of two X, we know that the formula for that is gonna be tan or two tangent of X divided by one minus 10 squared of X, okay? So again, if we look at our right triangle, we know that tangent is going to be sine over cosine. And so since tangent is sine over cosine, uh, we know that tangent of two X uh, we're going to look at it in terms of tan of x, and of course, um, we know for the angle x, tangent is going to be positive because sine divided by cosine um, is tangent, and a negative divided by negative is positive. And of course, um, for tan squared, regardless of what it is, it'll be non-negative. Okay, so we'll just say two times uh, tangent will be adjacent sorry, opposite over adjacent, which will be a positive one half. And let's get this back down here. We'll have one minus one half squared because that's tangent is one half. So this will be one over one minus one fourth. And one minus one fourth is three fourths. So the reciprocal of three fourths is four thirds. So that will be the answer for that one. And of course, um, for the final one we have here, which is cosine of two X, um, I'm going to um, erase a bit and give us some more room so that we can finish up that one. All right, so now that we have some room cleared here, let's go ahead and work on the very last one we were talking about, which is cosine of 2x. Let's make sure that our pen is working. Cosine of 2x. And so for cosine of 2x, the most readily formula that's known is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So again, um, we know that all we need to know is cosine of x and sine x and just square those, take the difference. So according to our right triangle here, we know that cosine of x, being that uh, cosine is in quadrant three, will be a negative, and then cosine is just adjacent over hypotenuse. And that will be squared minus sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is a negative one over square root of five squared. And so from there, if we square the first term, we will get four divided by five minus square the second term, we get one divided by five. And of course, the result is we have three over five. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on now. And so now we'll find out what um, tangent of pi over 8 is and the clue or the hint here is that pi over 8 could be rewritten as pi over 4 all that um, over pi over 2 okay so in knowing that we know that tan of pi over 8 is just tangent of pi over 4 all that divided by 2 so from there um, if we look at our half angle formulas, we'll see that the 
this would just be sine of pi over 4 all over 1 plus cosine of pi over 4. Okay, And the reason for that is because, and I'll just go ahead and write it down here and then erase it, that tangent of x over 2 in general is just sine of x over 1 plus cosine of x. Okay, um, We could also write this as 1 minus cosine x over sine x if we wanted to. Okay, But I chose to use the first one. So again, if we're looking, we know that sine has to be negative. Okay, in oh sorry, um, <laughs> thinking about the wrong example here. So um, for this particular one, we know that um, pi over four is in quadrant one, so sine is going to be positive. And so of course here, pi over four is the same as forty-five degrees. So this would be the 1, 1, square root of 2, right triangle. So we know that this is going to just be 1 over square root of 2 plus cosine of pi over 4. Of course, that will also be 1 over square root of 2. And so uh, from there, we can multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of 2 to get our answer here. So in the numerator, that would just be 1. In the denominator, that would be square root of 2 plus 1. And um, if we wanted to further rationalize the denominator some more, we could get the uh, conjugate of the denominator, which is square root of 2 minus 1, square root of 2 minus 1. And of course, this would be square root of 2 minus 1 there. And we know that whenever we multiply irrational conjugates, we just square first term minus square of the last term. And so, we'll just go ahead and do that. And that will just end up being square root of 2 over 1. And that will be 2 minus 1, which will just be square root of 2 minus 1. That will be the final answer.